Imagine controlling your computer with your voice, maybe the way that Tony Stark does with Jarvis in Iron Man. Well over the weekend a new AI operating system was made available for preview, it's called Open Interpreter and with its companion application O1 Lite it's designed to be spoken to and perform different tasks using LLM technology and what I did was downloaded it, installed it and got it running. I went through three different use cases and in this video I want to show you the trials, the tribulations and the success that I had with Open Interpreter. Over the weekend a new video came out about an AI operating system that could control your computer using your voice. They called it Open Interpreter. And there was also this companion app called O1 Lite which you would speak into and you could train your computer with different skills and workflows. The video showed a really good use case of opening up Slack, pressing Control K to put up a dialogue box where they could type someone's name in, in this case it was Ty, and then send a message to Ty. Once the operating system had observed all this capability, they were able to save it as a skill for future use. This combination of O1 Lite and Open Interpreter, they say, would allow you to have simple workflows, run desktop applications, and even string together different apps and websites. A pipeline example that they demonstrated was to open up an invoice on your mobile phone and send it through to your desktop computer so that it would go through to Slack, at which time it would just open up, be available when you're in front of your computer. And all of this for just $99. Get started, you're going to want to install Open Interpreter. Now it's pretty easy. You can go to your console and type in pip install open interpreter if you have Python installed on your computer. I do. It worked the first time. There was an error in one of the dependencies, but I ignored it and was still able to work through the demonstrations. To run Open Interpreter, you can go to your command line and just type interpreter. But one of the things you'll need to do first is head over to OpenAI and create yourself a new secret key and take a copy of it. If you head back to your terminal, you'll be able to type in interpreter dash dash help. You'll have access to features like system messages, custom instructions, but the one we're interested in today is the API key. You need to use your API key within the interpreter environment and you can either export it into your environment and just call interpreter directly or you can call interpreter with a parameter called dash dash API key and pass the value in there. The way I do it is I export it as a variable with the name of the application I'm using this API key with and then I use the variable from the dash dash API parameter within interpreter. Let's look at three different use cases for Open Interpreter. The first one I got working, but there was a little bit of a rough start, so let's get into it. Now run Interpreter from the command line and you'll have access to Open Interpreter and it works like ChatGPT. You just fill in the prompts that you want to do. The prompt that I'm starting with, when you list the folders at a particular location, I've used tilde dev and tilde is a shortcut for your user directory whatever that might be. In my case it would be users slash David Cruis slash dev. Now you simply type the prompt into the command line and press enter. What Open Interpreter will do is come up with a plan of action. The plan of action in this case is to use the OS module in Python to go and locate the directory and change to it and then switch over to a shell and run an ls command to get the folders that are available. Open Interpreter writes a little bit of code to change the current working directory to my user directory and it asked me if I want to run it. I said yes and what it did was said I've changed to your working directory users slash David Cruz slash dev. Then it's provided a shell command which is supposed to give me a list of the folders in that particular directory. Running the script, it confidently said, here are a list of folders at the tilde dev directory. Now, I thought this is a little bit incorrect. And what I did was I headed down to terminal and I ran the same command, but within my Python directory and noticed that it had gotten the folder incorrect. I was able to quickly diagnose what the issue was so I wrote a new prompt and I basically explained to it that what it had done was change the working directory in a Python script that it ran but then when that script ends 
it's not in that particular directory. So now it went and ran the ls command from shell and it happened to be running in the folder where I started interpreter from and that just happened to be in my dev slash python directory. As soon as I explained all this information to it and I said can you run it again, Open Interpreter was able to rerun the process, it apologised for getting it wrong, and the folders that it started listing were the folders in my dev directory. But what this really highlights is that if it gets it wrong, it can be catastrophic. Because if I'd have asked it to delete the directories in a particular folder and it went down to my home directory or whatever directory I happen to be running in, this could have been a real problem for me. So it's one of the edge cases that you really need to be careful with. And it was the example being shown on the internet that for me didn't actually work as advertised. Let's look at use case number two, and this one is can I control a web application using Open Interpreter? The application I chose was ClickUp. It's a project management tool, and all I want to do is add a task for a video. This is basically a similar sort of workflow to what they show in the video. In the video, they talk about Discord and sending a message to someone. In this case, I'm not on a desktop application. I'm on a web application and I want to add a task. I started a new interpreter and I wrote a prompt and basically the prompt was telling it that I used ClickUp that I wanted to add a new task into my project. So my project's called Appy Dave. So I gave it the URL to where it could find that information. And I'm just telling it, can it add a new ticket for my YouTube automation army using Crew AI within Chrome? Open Interpreter has come up with a plan of action for me. Now it's taken the URL that I've given and suggested that it could use some sort of Chrome web driver like a headless browser to open up the URL and then perform the task that needs to happen. So I said yes to that and it wrote a bunch of code in Python to use Selenium and a Chrome web driver and it's put in the URL and it looks ready to go. I ran the code and it failed and it didn't tell me what the issue was but a little bit of investigation showed me that there was a hallucination going on. Essentially the URL I typed in the URL that it showed in the plan of action happened to be different to the URL it put into the code. I altered the prompt a little bit, asked it to fix the issue and then to try a different technique and it came up with a new plan of action. So with the new plan of action and my prompt it proceeded to start installing a JavaScript package Puppeteer, so I could see it was going to use a headless browser, but I wasn't able to get it going any further after that. And it's pretty clear to me why the difference between doing this for Discord and using something like Apple Script, which I assume they used, versus using a headless browser, is I would also have to provide a bunch of authentication details. Now we're starting to get into an area that's a little bit more complex than the average user wants to do. I decided with this use case that I will wait until O1 Lite is available because it looks more tailor-made to the sort of problem that I'm trying to solve. If we head over to the website and look at buying it, you would have seen that earlier in the video I said $99. When I went there, it said $109. It's also said that they've sold out batch number nine. I assume that the price is going to go up a little bit as we go forward. For me, it'd be $170 Australian. But it sounds like good value for money if it does some of the things they're talking about. Let's move into the third test. And I thought, let's do something with the operating system. So I gave it a prompt saying that I'm using a Mac, that it's got access to applications like iTerm, Finder, Preferences, Chrome, and give me four use cases. Tell me what you can do. So I came up with some use cases for sending emails, creating calendar events, refreshing my tabs in Chrome, or changing something like the light and dark mode. I said, let's pick number four and see what you come up with. It's just given me a general view of what it could do with system preferences. It's come up with a plan. It wants a little bit more information. And I thought I use dark mode on my computer. Got my Chrome, Finder and preferences all in dark mode. And let's see what we can do about changing this to light. It's written a little bit of Apple script to tell the system events to set dark mode to false. And it asked me, do I want to run it? 
I said yes to change the dark mode to light mode. So here we are before and then afterwards, a number of the windows, including a little one down in the bottom right have changed. So we've got a custom application, we've got finder, we've got system preferences, all have gone light mode. The one window that didn't change was my Chrome and that's because I've got it specifically set to dark mode as a side to a system preference. Just briefly talk about voice control. So with Open Interpreter, the tool that does that is called O1 Lite, and it's a little device that allows you to control the application. For this demonstration, I didn't install O1 Lite. What I did do was use Siri to talk and create my prompts that way. If you want to get O1 Lite working or you want a little bit more information, then head over to openinterpreter.com or you can go to the main GitHub page and from there navigate to both O1 Lite and Open Interpreter. So here's my opinion of Open Interpreter and O1 Lite and whether this is right for you. The first example where I was listing the folders in a directory did work, but it only worked with a little bit of tweaking. If I was using a different command like deleting of folders, it could have been quite disastrous. In the second example, I was trying to emulate the Slack version that they use in the video where they're recording skills and it's playing them back. That's not how it worked for me. It went down this quite a programming and technical path. For this one, it was a bit of a fail for me. The third example was just changing a system setting, dark mode to light mode. It worked quite well the first time. I was pretty happy with that. Thank you for watching about Open Interpreter. I'm Appy Dave, and what I usually like to do is help people with prompt engineering and GPT, and I have an academy for that. I also have other videos related to GPTs in the link above. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.